As you know, Preschool in a Box is the one thing I wished I had when I started my preschool. It will help you get your preschool started quick and easy without wasting time or money doing the wrong things in the wrong order. Now, as a member of Preschool All-Stars, you can get your Preschool in a Box for 50% off. Here's a sample for you to enjoy. In today's sample of Preschool in a Box, we are gonna show you how to set up your preschool in your home. <laughs> That's right, when I started, all I had was my kitchen table and my living room. So if that's all you have too, you're in good hands. <laughs> we're gonna show you how to set that up and uh, we'll start first there. And then we're also gonna show you if you have perhaps a garage, how you can set up your garage conversion also. So like I promised, I was gonna show you the two things that you have to have for a preschool class and it's not the couch. It's actually, one of them is the floor. And you can use your floor for a variety of purposes, like song and dance time, also for having um, circle time, and free play time, okay? So that's one of them. If you have a couch, that's an extra bonus. Oh, and also you can use the floor for quiet reading time or your story time, all right? But you can, of course, use the couch for a variety of purposes, too, to help you with that if you have a couch in your living room, okay? The second thing that you need is a kitchen table. So those are the only two things that you need for your preschool, a floor and a kitchen table. I bet you guys have that, right? All right, so what you can use the kitchen table for is to do arts and crafts or even discovery centers um, and also to do snack time. So anything that you have besides a floor and a table is gonna be above and beyond what you actually need for preschool. So anyways, those are the things you need. I'm gonna take you around a little tour around my house so you can see what my preschool is all about. So anyways, here's how they, um, this is my front living room area. And all I have is a couch and a bench. It's pretty minimal. Um, and here we do our circle time and our story time, like I mentioned to you. Kids cuddle up on the bench and the, and the couch when I do story time. And then of course, I've got my table over there and I pull up some stools so that we can have enough seats for 10 kids. I'll probably be adding another bench there um, instead of the two big chairs, and that'll help the kids come on over to, um, to have their snacks. And then let's go room. You can see that it's bright and cheery. I've got a fun alphabet rug on the floor. I got that from Craigslist. Um, it was somebody else had that rug. They had bought it from Pottery Barn, and I got it for about $100, so that was a great buy. And then I'll just show you around the room here. Here I've got something, uh, a great marker board that kids can color on. Up here is where I put a lot of the arts and crafts projects that we've done, just a few of them, just to help the kids remember what fun things we've done. We did masks one time and we've done chains and lots of stickers. And then over here, I've got this idea of a clothespin line now this is great when you've got your children's um, arts and crafts projects that need to dry. All they can do is they can come on over, they can hang them up and they'll dry over here. Probably not good if you've got wet dripping paint though, but everything else it works. And how I made this was, this was actually just regular wire. You know, wire that you'd find from a, um, maybe like a, when, you, when you're gonna hang mirrors or big pictures, it comes with picture wire like that. So I just got that kind of wire there and then a lot of clothespins. So very inexpensive. And then I just attached it over here with one of those little types of attachments. Sorry, it's not really focusing on that there. Anyway, so that's a, a really fun thing. They can always hang up their, their work and be proud of it. Over here, you can see I've got, oh, I apologize about that. That was quite a bump, wasn't it? Um, over here on the wall, it's because I'm attaching my camcorder to the, to the um, plugging it into the outlet there. Okay, over here you can see I've got a ton of letters on the wall and the appropriate way that you're supposed to write them with a fun picture as well. And that way they can always see how they're supposed to write their letters. And down here the kids love to come over here and try to count all the shapes. And they, they can see the number of the shapes as well as counting them. And I've also got a ton of aprons. We love to keep our clothes clean while we're painting. And there's a bunch of different ones. You can tell there's, let me show you what I got here. I have dragonflies. We have, oops, falling to the ground, bees and sunflowers. I got these at the dollar store, so what a good deal for that, huh? And then a bunch of other ones. 
These are a little bit different. You can see that one's been used a little bit. So lots of fun aprons. Over here I have a color poster on the wall. That was one of my original posters uh, back when I started preschool. Tells you all the colors. We like to do little quizzes with that. Here's a shape game. And down here in a baggie, I have all of the different shapes. And they pull one out and they can find where it needs to go on the shape train. Kids really love to do that one. You can see I've just got a variety of different um, wall posters down here. The world, more letters, numbers, the planets. Okay, and then over here, got the numbers again. I just like to put them in a variety of different places because kids, depending on where they sit at our tables, are looking at different things. They're all facing different ways. So I like to make sure everybody can see something. Then over here, I've got another game. I got this from the dollar store as well. It was an alphabet matching sound game. So you can see that over here, we've got A matches A for apple. So they go through and they try to match the object with the sound of the letter. Just got some more things on the wall, colors with Sesame Street is really fun. Some money things, kids love that. And some more shapes. Over here, you'll notice a bunch of posters on the wall. Those were actually pictures that my friend took, and um, I just loved them so much, and they're really inexpensive to, to print out poster size prints over at places like Walmart or um, other photo copy stores. And then I just um, stapled them to the wall, and then I actually attached a ribbon, you can see the ribbon down there, as the border. So that way I didn't have to spend a lot of money with... Uh, with actual frames because those will get pretty pricey and then right there you see those flowers those are actually um they're like they're wall stickers and they actually can come off but a fun little addition it looks like they're painted they just they look really pretty they're really cute they got little ladybugs they actually look like they're painted but they're just stickers and over here at this table this is called my Dis discovery zone and in my discovery zone i always put different things um Today we've got manipulatives. You can see like little um, little bears and discs and different color items. Those are great for sorting with different categories or shapes. And then over here, I'm gonna show you what I have over here in this area. Show you first what we've got up here. I've got a lot of storage. This is my storage area, you can tell. It's not totally clean. Um, I've got a birthday chart up here. When school starts back up, I'll put all their birthdays onto the correct month. I have a, a clock that actually, um, of course, works. And so down there, they can try to match the clock time to the appropriate time up there. Over here on this board, this is where we do our, um, like we do Pledge of Allegiance. There's our flag. Then we come down here for our calendar time where we're trying to learn the days of the, of the week and the months of the year. And then on this marker board is where they actually learn to write their letters. And then we can see that it's sunny and today is Friday. Okay, and then I'll come over here. I'll show you what I've got. Right in here, we've got all of my Play-Doh cookie cutter sorters. Any kind of cookie cutter shapes for the Play-Doh. I love to put those in there. You can see that this bin is all about music and tambourines and singing and dancing. Up here, let's see what we have. Oh, some more Play-Doh, some more fun stuff in the Play-Doh bin. And I think that one is just glue right there. And this is, uh, it's getting harder, difficult here. This is all painting things, and of course I have to have a cleaning supplies bin, because you got to make sure your preschool's clean. And like I said, this is really messy, so I'm not going to show you that stuff. <laughs> That's just all messy stuff. But here's some um, cleaning things I love to have on hand. I do like to use a hand sanitizer for when we go on field trips or somewhere the that um, just need to have a quick hand washing. I don't like to use this very often though because it does contain alcohol and it's pretty harsh on little children's hands. Um, I do like to use little baby wipes for after snack time um, just to help get their hands and faces clean. Okay, in here, boy, messy, messy, messy. This is just my catch-all drawer, but you know, I've got things like student of the week. I love to give those out. Every child will have a chance to earn the student of the week. And down here, got a whole bunch of magazines you can see. Because we love to cut out pictures from magazines. And I've got some fun little uh, scrapbooking supplies as well down there. So you can see I, I actually labeled them all. 
supplies, paper crafts, small arts and crafts. It helps me so that I can remember where things should go when I'm putting them away. In here we got lots of fun stuff, things like brads, tape, ribbon, you know, just most miscellaneous stuff that you have around at home. And I love these little storage containers because they actually hold paint very well if you need to if you need to save the paint for another class day. You know, things like little um, popsicle sticks are always fun too. And even a feather quill pen, those are great. Oh, I'll put those away here, see if I can rearrange it so I can shut it. Woohoo! Okay, then other arts and crafts, we love pom-poms, even little sponges with letters that you can paint. Definitely, we have all of the straws, as well as the um, pipe cleaners. This one's a really messy drawer because it's full of all my big stuff. But you can see I've got feathers, string, even um, fabric paint back there, as well as glitter glue, tons of glitter glue, sequins down there. Okay, moving on down the line, we definitely have lots of all of these fun things, sand, tons of stickers. I love these things because um, they come from the dollar store too, but kids just love, like, they have cute themes. So this is our ocean theme. And they get to pull off that white backing and be able to stick that on things. And then here I've got all my manipulatives, even perler beads, which are these great things. They are little bitty beads that when you iron them make cute shapes. And lots of, you know, barrel of monkeys. Who can resist barrel of monkeys, right? So that's kind of what I have in my preschool room here. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the tables. You do definitely don't have to have the professional school tables with chairs, you know, like these ones. You can have any kind of things, especially just your kitchen table would work great. But I actually got these um, a year after my preschool started because I wanted to upgrade and reinvest in my preschool in something durable that was going to last long and looked great and matched. So um, I got these off Craigslist. <clears throat> And I was able to get them for a very inexpensive price because somebody, um, one of the local schools was actually shutting down. And so they were offering all of their school tables and chairs for a very great price. So look for those kind of things. Don't look for things that are new. I mean, these look new, but they're not. Okay, now I'm going to go in and show you how the children enter our preschool through our garage, our entryway. Okay, our entryway. And you can see all the cute cubbies lined up here. What we have here is we've got a cubby, the little um, the little hanger there for their coats. And then also down at the bottom, you can see that I actually took my children's feet and we painted them and then they stepped on the garage floor. So um, just a fun way that they could know exactly where their shoes should go. And then we can also put their, their, um, their artwork down there if we want to dry. And so you can see here I've got all their little names on their cubbies. And actually, this is for my summer camp right now, but during the fall, I've got four names for each cubby. I've got like a name right there, there's one, and there'd be two, three, and then all the way down four at the bottom. Um, because I do four different classes, so I have to have enough to, um, you know, to, to have a, a place for each child to have their own spot. And they just share, you know, I mean, each class has their own spot, but then the next class comes and then they need a spot too. So everybody does get their own, but when the class isn't in session, then the other class gets it. So and then, you know, they just come up there through the garage right into my door. Now over here, you can see that I've got kind of a checkout area. Down here is where I do my sticker chart. And this is really fun. I, um, I don't do it during the summer, but I put a, like I told you before, I do a little sticker chart where I've got their name and a whole bunch of spots for a sticker that I can put on there and then once their sticker chart gets completed then they get a pick from the treasure box so that's fun then up here this is my checkout and sign out area so it's kind of missing you can see it's there by the pen normally I would have a paper there that would tell the parents where to sign out over here is where I've got my license and those are just some flyers for parents to look at about the preschool and then you can see I've got my cute little cow over here it says have an utterly wonderful birthday he always likes to welcome the children. And sometimes I put their craft projects right there to dry so that I can hand them to the parents. So you can see it's nothing more than a garage. Um, it's very it's very simple and 
Uh, nothing much different about it. On the floor here, you can see it's pretty messy. I actually put, um, I think I can show you these over here. See, on this side, I just have a normal garage, okay? So I'm no different than you guys. But you see these little mats over here. I actually put those down for the preschool so they can sit down and have a nice, comfortable spot to sit. And there's our neighborhood. So hope you enjoyed learning about my preschool and taking a tour. Now I'm going to go ahead and... From first glance, you might not even notice that this is actually our garage. But as you look closer, you'll start to see a few things that do resemble a garage. We've just tried to hide them, such as this huge curtain rod that goes all the way across because behind the curtain is, of course, our garage door. Okay, so you can see that there. Still has it fully functional in case we ever move. All we have to do is go ahead and just take off the curtain rod, the curtains, reattach all the apparatus. You'll notice that none of the apparatus is actually still there, so all of those the beams and everything that actually makes a garage door functional isn't there, but it is still in that top ceiling port so that we can basically reattach it at any time. That's one of the great things about having this in our garage is that we know that if we ever do leave, we can certainly get it put back together very quick for the next owners. Okay, not like that's planning on happening anytime soon. I'm going to go ahead and just show you a few things about the garage that makes us a little bit unique that uh, turns it into a nice preschool room. Right here, we actually did not have a door. This was just plain wall. So we went ahead and installed a door as well as a window. It looks like it's getting really dark right there. So I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. Anyways, we installed a door and a window as well as another window on this side. The windows obviously add light into the room, which if you've ever put a preschool room into a garage, you know how quickly it gets very dark. So very important to have natural light. We installed the door on the side so that the preschool parents could easily come in and out and I don't feel like they're ever going into my house. Great tip there. Also, over here, we've put together this entire coat rack area. Very important. The preschoolers need to have a place to put their coats and their backpacks. Now I have 40 children enrolled in my preschool. I'm going to show you how I basically manage that, how I make sure that every child has their own coat place. So we have 10 coat racks here, you'll see all the way down the line, as well as a nice shelf to put their papers on above it. Then I've basically divided my classes into little birds or things that have to do with sun, because that um, has to do with our preschool. So we have sunbirds is one class, and you can see all those row of sunbirds right there with different names on them, and we let the kids color their name tags. Down here we have sunfish, down here sun sunbeams, and down there sunflowers. So Obviously the classes don't come together at the same time, so they all have their own coat rack area that they can put their coat on, and it goes all the way across so they know immediately where their coat spot goes. Now, I took down one of these posters here. This is actually an easel. I'm sorry, it's, it's actually a canvas that would go on top of an easel. You can notice it's about a one inch thickness there. The reason why I got all of these, I got four of them, is to highlight our student of the month for each class. And the reason why I actually took this one down is so that I could showcase what was behind this wall. Look, this is still a garage. We still have utility items in this garage, right? We have our, uh, our heater system, we have our sprinkler system, all of our, all of our electricity. All of that is still in here, but I cleverly hid it. Now, if I can do this real quick, I'm gonna put this back up here. See if we can do that. Okay, so I basically hid all of those items behind our board. Oh, that's what happens when you try to do it with one hand. And none of the preschoolers know what's behind there. How about that? And the parents can't see it either. So pretty clever, huh? Okay, so that's that. What else did we do for our garage here? Oh, this entire wall was created. It looks like normal, but if you look over here, you can see that actually... That was the real wall back there, and we built out this wall over here. We created this little area, and the reason for that was because we have what's very typical in garages. We have a, a uh, heating unit, and of course it's real dark back there. You can't really see it very well, but you know, that's where our natural gas heater is. 
And of course, we didn't want the preschoolers getting into it, nor did we want the parents really knowing that it was there. So we went ahead, built out the wall, put, um, put these nice doors in so that it could vent any of the air or anything that needs to have vented, which is really important. Make sure you have adequate um, ventilation there. And we just built it out. We put these nice doors. And then you can see, guess what? This is actually also my laundry room. But once you shut the doors, nobody knows. Pretty clever. We've also built tons of storage in here. So important to have storage. You can see it goes all the way up a second row there. If you measure it correctly and get the correct bins, you can put storage anywhere in any little alcove. Very clever. So that was another tip there for our room. Now also, if you're going to be doing it in your garage, you'll notice our floor here. This is actually the concrete floor. You'll see it a little bit. You can see the actual divisions of the concrete squares right there. What we did was we took a Quikrete, appliant, a Quikrete product and we went ahead and painted the whole floor with it. It's a nice tan, light tan color. And then we put all these little speckles on top. Let me tell you why I love speckles. Do you see that paint mark on the floor there? If this was had no speckles, that little paint mark would show up really, really well. But with all of the speckles, it's kind of hard to see if there's any paint or dirt on the floor. Now, of course, we keep this room very clean. But with preschoolers, it's going to get messy every now and then. So to help it look nice for the parents, that little speckle application really helps to hide any any problems with the floor. Now, of course, you don't want preschoolers, you know, sitting and reading books on the car or on the concrete. So we have a nice alphabet rug here. Very important to have some type of a circle rug or an alphabet rug or something where you can gather the group. Again, we have another one over here for their toys. See, we try to separate the room into different areas. This is one of the areas they can come during free play. Of course, we'll use the tables as center play as well. Put out a few different centers. We also have this little alcove over here. Currently, it's a little dollhouse and reading area. We're actually going to be changing that in just a little bit to an art area. Okay, another some more rugs. We want to put a rug by the front door so the parents can wipe their feet on it. Okay, I think that's about it as far as details for the garage. Try to build out storage anywhere that you can. Anywhere that you can. You can see we're already overflowing. So we're actually going to build another storage cabinet right above for our teacher so she has more room there. And again, we have the same shelf idea on this side as well. It really helps her to be able to put a lot of the, the items like glue sticks and scissors. Just any place where you can stick things is great. Wasn't that amazing? Oh, sorry I had to cut it off early, but I hope that you've enjoyed this sample training. If you want the rest of the training and you'd also like to get 50% off your preschool in a box, then I invite you to join Preschool All-Stars. Hey, have you heard about Preschool in a Box? It's literally the one thing I wished I had when I started my preschool 10 years ago. It would have saved me so much time and so much money. Instead, I did the wrong things at the wrong time. Waste of time, I tell you. I can't wait to tell you all about Preschool in a Box. All the things I wished I had, like curriculum. Oh my gosh, can I even tell you how many hours I spent every single night on Pinterest and Facebook groups and the blogs and Google trying to find activities to do for lessons the next day? Or forms, what the heck was I supposed to give to my preschool families? What was I supposed to include in a policies and procedures handbook? Or marketing, how was I supposed to sign up kids? I had a preschool to fill and I had money that I needed at the end of the month, but how was I going to get that tuition, right? All of those components are inside of Preschool in a Box and a whole lot more. I want to get you Preschool in a Box. I've got an exclusive opportunity for you. When you join our Preschool All-Stars membership, not only will you be surrounded by myself and hundreds of preschool owners cheering you on during your journey, you get an exclusive discount on Preschool in a Box. I'm talking out of this world. When people see it, they kind of lose their mind. They're so excited, ready to grab it right away. I can't wait to get you your exclusive discount on Preschool in a Box. Just join Preschool All-Stars. Click the link in the description or go to preschoolallstars.com. It's going to be like Christmas.